Another month, another update. What's going on everybody? My name is Tenebris Infinite and welcome back to Generation Zero. The end of September is upon us and with that comes update 1.10 for Generation Zero. Let's talk about some of these patch notes really quickly here and then start talking about the new introduction of a gameplay feature that they've introduced here. So for this month, the patch notes are actually short and sweet. Uh, instead of the pages and pages of patch notes, it seems like the team's really been able to knuckle down on some of the prevalent issues here in Generation Zero. So, reading off the patch notes here, first off, we've got some audio fixes. They've corrected an issue that would cause the VO from the mission Enemy of My Enemy to incorrectly play at the beginning of your game, uh, when you started a fresh game. They've corrected an issue that could prevent the out-of-ammo sound effect from playing as intended when reaching the end of a magazine. So now you should correctly hear that bullet click sound effect when you run out of ammo. Then, for some fixes for some crashes, uh, they've located multiple crash causes and they've fixed them. So hopefully this will uh, solve a number of recurring crashes. Uh, some of the CE errors here on PlayStation, and uh, hopefully specifically some crash to desktops that had happened to PC players uh, since the most recent update. Next up for enemy behavior, they've corrected an issue that would prevent the harvester from entering its defense mode, or what I like to personally call it turtling up. Uh, so now a uh, harvester should effectively go into its defense mode or turtle mode uh, whenever it uh, so chooses to as opposed to having any sort of blocks in its AI. Uh, they've fixed hunters going into an incorrect ready to fire pose when using the shoulder mounted weapons. So this is similar to the fix that happened last month where they fixed the same issue for when they tried using their arm attachment. Uh, sniper rifle equipped hunters now will correctly align their laser targeting to players before firing, which is good because sometimes they can catch you out with those really quick sniper shots, so it's nice that you'll have that laser tell. Uh, and then lastly here, explosive ticks now will correctly use their explosive attack when attacking sticky flared enemies. So now it might be a tactical advantage to pop out a sticky flare if you're encountering a harvester and he's dropping out just a crap ton of ticks on you. Uh, next up for some environment fixes here. Uh, they've corrected a lighting issue at Ibaholman Church Tower. They've corrected some invisible doors at Furudin Radar Mast. And they've fixed a terrain issue at Muscadin Bunker Complex that could prevent players from walking over it. And uh, they also had a, a couple safe houses with the same name. I believe that that was Arkelstorp, uh, and they've fixed that. So for graphics here, they've corrected uh, motion blur effects that would happen to character hair and uh, the front wheel from time to time when riding a bicycle. And they've corrected an issue that could cause stuttering when canceling ADS, or aimed down sight, uh, when you were standing still. For localization, uh, they've added um, extra localization for the skills menu. Uh, spare, special character should now correctly display in the UI uh, for your different localization. And they've corrected some inconsistencies with ammo name localizations. And they've resolved an issue that would cause English to revert to the Swedish audio settings after a restart. For the missions, there's a few fixes here. So they've corrected that the icon for the key now shows properly in the mission loud and clear. They've clarified the mission objective for out hiking. They've added extra PO, an extra POI location for a wrench in the works and also for behind the curtain. For the intro mission, they've corrected an issue that could cause uh, the handwritten note to be invisible. And they've clarified the naming of a related safe house for a mission on the road. They've corrected over and outs radio mission objective to now correctly appear in the log. They've um, fixed the starting mission item 
for uh, the enemy of my enemy. They've corrected a placeholder text on the To the Lighthouse mission item. Uh, the mission item for unbearable lightness now will correctly have 3D models. And they've fixed an issue that could make the mission woodcutter uncompletable, which probably was the issue with the shotgun. Uh, so, a whole bunch of mission fixes here. And for the last three things here, uh, for the UI, some of the ammo types didn't have a proper 3D model, so uh, that's fixed up. They've corrected an issue that would prevent switching between main and side mission tabs if the slider was not at the top position. So if you were looking at missions further down in your list or some of the missions you had completed, now you'll be able to effectively switch between those two tabs. Uh, for items, they've corrected a disorientating zoom effect that would occur when you would change from a crouch to a standing position when aiming down sights. And for safe houses, uh, the last fix here, uh, some of the safe houses did not have uh, weapon stashes or bike locations. So now all of the safe houses that should have those, um, those objects will have them. So let's really quickly test out some of these things. Let's aim down sights while we're crouching here. And when we stand, it just plays the normal animation of us standing up. That's good because that was actually really disorientating. Now let's check out uh, the safe house. This is off at the uh, Skype Club, and this was one of the main locations where I was really confused to not find a stash box. So let's see if we could find the stash box around here. Seems like it's gonna be in this little red room. Maybe? Yeah, there we go. Awesome, it's good to have a plunger over here. So after checking through the map, it seems like the only safe house that does not have a bike station or a plunger box is the initial starting house back at Itervik, uh, which, is, which is good because I was a little nervous that they would introduce a bike station at the first house, and I think that that would take away from your initial moments here playing the game. So, uh, moving forwards, you should be able to access your storage box at every single safe house location. And, of course, if a safe house does not have a storage box, go off to the forums or the Discord and file a bug report. So, for the last thing here today, my dudes, let's talk about these challenges. This is the new big feature being brought to Generation Zero here for the September update. And challenges are an interesting way of giving you rewards for playing a, in the game here and kind of mulling about and doing the same thing that you would normally do. So let's take a look at some of these challenges here and uh, take a look at some of the rewards for them too. So on the main menu, you'll find the challenges tab at the end of your tabs here. And uh, for each of these challenges, uh, you've got two classes of challenges, resistance challenges and truth challenges. Resistance challenges are kind of tied to, as I said, your general gameplay. So destroying enemies seemingly of a specific class will net you various rewards and uh, prestige points. And prestige points will be kind of, for now, a, uh, kind of score to use as like a bragging right here in Generation Zero. And alongside that, you can also acquire various status titles. And the titles are seemingly more of the same thing, where it's a bit of a bragging right, but they've got some pretty fun little names to them. The Alpha Wolf over here, Eradicator of Parasites, some really cool, uh, cool little titles here. And from the looks of it, some of these challenges are a little tough, too. I feel like destroying 125 Phoenix Hunters will be a good good challenge to complete. Um, but retroactively, you could kind of just specifically only kill Hunters of the Phoenix class and make it through the whole uh, challenge tree. So I feel like that's a good little pro tip to give to you guys. If you are at the end game, just target the Fenix ones because you're eventually going to need to target the Fenix ones anyway. Uh, of course, depending on 
you know, ammo supplies and stuff like that. But um, I, w I would say targeting solely the Fenix class enemies would be a good decision for completing these challenges quickly if you're at the end game. And over here we have the truth tab. And in the truth tab, this is all related to uh, completing various objectives and missions throughout the game. So uh, when you complete these missions, you'll get a variety of prestige points, and these should all affect your character retroactively. Uh, as you can see, I've got 81 prestige points at this point in time. Um, so when you complete these missions, you will also unlock from time to time interesting little uh, vanity items here. So um, the vanity items are probably the most interesting reward for completing these challenges. Uh, some of them sound pretty interesting, like the Fenix Runner boots and stuff. We'll have to wait and see what those actually look like, but you guys can be rest assured that when I unlock this stuff, I'll do a video on it right away. Nah, dude. It seems like they added some pretty interesting little vanity items here. So one of the one of the cooler ones that they've added so far is uh, this pilot breathing gear with the aviators. I think that this one's super cool and will really uh, go towards some fans of the more industrial themed aesthetic for their characters. Uh, on top of that, we got this kind of cool little lab coat from uh, who was it? Who's this lab coat from? Von Ulmer himself we got von ulmer's lab coat so uh, i mean it's questionable how we actually obtained this lab coat but uh, a, a very cool little addition with the glasses on it and everything it seems a little bit more detailed than your average jacket uh there's a t-shirt and sadly enough there are no real easy methods to looking at a t-shirt let's see if i can find um uh, uh, proper jacket so that I can show off this t-shirt here. There we go. I think that that's the best we're going to get, but it seems like the message on there says the the prince is in another castle. Whoop. All in all, a pretty interesting update here. Uh, with, with the introduction of challenges, these could be expanded on in some very interesting ways in the future here, my dudes. Um, and for now, I think that it will be a nice kind of palate cleanser before we get uh, an actual kind of proper introduction of content here into Generation Zero. Um, I know that a lot of people are looking for repeatable things, and sadly enough, this is not a repeatable thing. It's another one of those one-and-done kind of gameplay features here in Generation Zero. But uh, I do think that in the future, if they were to design maybe a separate tab and come up with a new method of uh, creating some sort of challenge there, uh, you could potentially have uh, a new venue of creating a repeatable gameplay feature. So there we go, update 1.10 is a pretty solid update, uh, a smaller update in comparison to the previous ones, but all in all, a good sign moving forwards because that just means that there's less bugs that the developers feel they need to pay attention to. Uh, so keep your eyes on this channel for the rewards to those uh, various challenges. I should have that done within a day or so probably. Um, but for now, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And until then, peace.